I guess I like to learn my way. Probably not the, I'm not one to kind of sit down and listen to instructions or kind of really kind of follow manuals. I quite like just throwing myself in the deep end. I'm a good learner by getting hands on and kind of trusting myself and being confident and just cracking on with it really. Rope soloings, it's kind of for people that are lonely or have no friends or maybe just people that are a little bit loose. Um, I guess I'd probably come in the last category, I hope. <laughs> Obviously you're on your own, uh, but you want the protection of a rope. So you usually, it's kind of like a lead climbing, but upside down. So you clip the end of the rope to the belay or build a belay for it. And then you feed out slack for you as the climber, as you move up the rope, clipping gear as you go. Um, it's kind of like you belay yourself. The Alps is like a massive playground. Um, as someone that lives in Scotland, you know, it's, it's friggin' miles away. There's nothing quite like being able to come out somewhere like here where everywhere you look, there's, you know, three, 4,000 meter peaks all around you. It's a massive playground. I guess wild cam is cool, you know? You can, you can literally stop wherever you want and, and you've got a bed to sleep in, which is comfy. Um, you've got somewhere dry if the weather's minging. You've got somewhere to base yourself around. You, you don't really need much more. You need a shower, you can use the rivers or you know, even some natural waterfalls and stuff, which is awesome. Actually fairly organized in the van. Everything's got a place, which is cool. All my climbing gear and rock gears in there. Ropes all stored in a certain place. Yeah, it's, it's cool. So a rope soloing, obviously you're leading away from the belay that you clip to. Um, and as you, you climb up, you get to the next belay eventually. You set up your rope so that you can abseil back down the pitch you've just climbed. You gather all your gear on the way down. And then once you're at the original belay, you undo everything and then Juma back up the rope to get back to your high point. Uh, yeah, I guess it's really rewarding because you, you know you've done it all yourself. There's nobody else collecting the gear. Yeah, three times up a pitch is enough to make you realize that you've, uh, yeah, you've done it. <laughs> I guess I kind of focus on kind of being an all-rounder. It kind of changes your outlook on how you view mountains or lines, you know. It's so easy to focus on going up and all oh, that hard slog down, but yeah, going down's awesome fun now. If you've got a wing, um, there's so many times I've, you know, I've just done an easy climb to get to an awesome launch, or maybe it's been the other way. I've done an awesome climb and I've just had a really easy launch just to get down. And it kind of changes the, the way you focus on how you approach a mountain, I think, yeah. Life's short, so you gotta, you gotta kind of crack on and risks are worth taking, but you've also got to be sensible about it. You don't want to steal tomorrow's fun just to have a better day today, but you want to be right on that fine line where you're getting the most out of every day. Speed flying is essentially a small paraglider that's kind of cut differently to give you loads of speed. The art of speed flying is maybe not like paragliding to fly far, but to fly the terrain. You're so focused in the moment. It's kind of like a zone, you totally zone in on exactly what you're doing. There's no time to think about anything else. You're not, you're not even really concentrating on flying. You, it just kind of happens. It's all kind of done on feel. And uh, yeah, you're just focused on the terrain that's coming at you and uh, yeah, moving yourself around it. I guess it's kind of like a jet fighter pilot sort of mentality, and really focused on that spot.
Yeah!